Hey everyone, this is Stevie Richards. Welcome back to the home studio. I almost said home gym because most of the videos we do here on the YouTube channel are home gym slash fitness, health, wellness related. But we also do a lot of production here at Stevie Richards Fitness. So once in a while, I love to do these behind the scene tech videos. And in today's video, we're gonna give an updated review on one of my favorite pieces of live streaming software. I pause when I say live streaming because we're not live streaming right now, but this is a very powerful iOS-based switcher studio. It's named Switcher Studio, so it is an all-in-one switcher studio using iOS devices, but also using Macs. And in some features, it doesn't matter. It's agnostic, whether you're using an Android device, PC, Mac, iOS, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna try to cover all these features in this video, but we have two to three review videos up here, including the first time using Switcher Studio, which really proved how easy it is to use. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of a comparison, I use Ecamm Live. I've experimented with the YOLO box. Uh, there's different solutions, but for the money they charge, and the integration with iOS devices. You can use up to nine iOS devices as cameras over the same Wi-Fi network. And that is really a fascinating and intriguing, interesting and powerful proposition. It, mostly everybody out there has iPhones. And even if not, if you wanna use an iPad, if you wanna use a Mac as a camera, it really does uh, kind of bring together all that power of everybody just connecting their iPhones or iOS devices or Macs over a Wi-Fi network and be able to have a nine camera setup. Pretty cool, but also pre-recorded stuff, audio wise, video wise, and then you'll incorporate the power of the Rodecaster Pro, which we'll do in this video. And we're gonna timestamp all this stuff because there's a, a lot of segmented categorized type use cases that I wanna cover. So first and foremost, what we have here is the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, running as the switcher to the size of the screen is really very powerful, very awesome. And if I were to do this intro correctly, I would say, hi everyone, this is Stevie Richards. Welcome back to the home studio. And I can do that live. And you can see little, little touches of the transitions of stuff like that. When I hit it like that, or if I wanna bring in my watermark right there, and if I wanna move that, I can do that. We're gonna try to do some screen recording here to let everybody know what everything looks like as we change it. I'm gonna hit that again, and it switches it over to the other side. This enables me to do many less, if not no edits in post-production. As a matter of fact, I can uh, export this into LumaFusion on my iPad Pro, and then put it right up into YouTube if I wanna do any kind of edits or anything like that. Also, of course, streaming to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, you can't do it all at once, but you can do a custom RTMP, and that's like Restream or other ones, where you can do all those at once. Really cool stuff. So like I said before, you can do pre-recorded content, bring it over here. Uh, I did a watch along, myself versus uh, Wild Kyle, say his name right, he'll, he'll get me for that. <laughs> One of the wrestlers from Wildcat, Wildcard, Jaden Spade. Uh, and I voiced it over as far as watching it along. I was in a picture-in-picture -picture environment. So it looked something like, I guess, this. If you were to do a uh, multi-view, which we'll do that. We'll actually get to that in a second. But I want to show you some of the other things that you could do pre-recorded. Like I can bring up my yoga commercial video right here. And just talk about that as it's going through. You might be hearing the audio from that along with my audio but it is pretty cool that I can come right back here. Now, there are transitions. I use a cross dissolve. I like that a lot better. So if I was gonna cross dissolve this, say into the yoga commercial, I can do that. It'll fade and then comes right back to me. Very cool stuff. So what I wanna get into now, I'm gonna hit screen record on my iPad Pro, just to give you an idea of some of this stuff. And we are screen recording. So. What we have here is the screen recording of the iPad Pro, and what I'm gonna hit right here is plus. And you can see we have photo, video, text, and graphics, logo, inputs, switcher cloud, and multi-views. Multi-views have been drastically improved to have background images, which is really awesome. I tried it out 
uh, in a pre-recorded segment with my wife, which will be in the review here, uh, demonstrating how the camera and even the lav mics can uh, go outside the room and have range. So you can have on location, uh, pretty cool stuff. The video chat feature does that as well. And we're gonna cover that in its own separate video because there's a lot of features within video chat. But let's look at this. We have photo, video, text, and graphics, logo, input, switcher, cloud, multi-views. So let's, um, let's go to text and graphics. You have titles here. Welcome to the show. Your text here, your text here. We used to have Steve Richards broadcast that we would have and do that. And then up there would be where we had Stevie 5 before. And there is that, Switcher Studio. And then we would have some bullet point stuff there. So if I wanted to add this, I could literally just text in anything I want. I'm going to actually cancel out of that, go back in, welcome, and go back here to the home gym. And there we have it right there. So as we bring this down here, you have text size. So I can fit that in right there where it fits it in between there. And then the text color is white. And I believe I can do a, a border here somewhere. The font, the text color, all that stuff. Actually, the text color is what I want. I'm going to take blue for my brand. And it will actually show you within there a preview of what it will look like. So we'll go done. And we're coming back here to the main camera so you can see what I created. So... Welcome to the home gym, everybody, even though we're not in the home gym, we're in the home studio, and I hit the button again, and we're out. Very, very nice, very easy. I love these transitions and the way it's nice and smooth there. Hit it again. I can even take the SRF out of there and bring that up one more time. Tap it again right there. So let's go back into this, and now we're going to do... The logo, the input, switcher, cloud. I do have some stuff in the cloud right here that will load, including the Retromania uh, stuff. I can download that right there. It'll come up. And we have the Retromania graphic as I talk about Retromania Wrestling coming out soon. We're actually going to have a um, an arcade cabinet from iArcade with the Retromania branding on it. I'm going to be one of three people that are going to get that cabinet. So that is super cool. Hit that again or hit come back to here and I'm ready to go. So that's really, really powerful stuff right there. We're going to hit plus again. So many different things to do. And we have video. We have photo library or imported videos, all sorts of different stuff. We also have switcher cloud. We have files. I can go into my files and do that. I can go into my recordings and bring in a record, something I pre-recorded, which is really, really cool to be able to bring that in there and do that. You have imported videos. Uh, there's the old uh, Stevie Richards open right there. The SRB logo, SRB opening, the lower thirds, things I've played with there. Going to photo library, got a couple things. Got the yoga video, got some tutorials, lots of cool stuff that you can use. So that makes it very powerful. Now we're gonna go into multi-views right now and I wanna show you, we have a multi-view. If you looked at the screen recording, we have a multi-view already here, but let's go back into creating a multi-view. Hit plus there, click on multi-view and we have different stuff. We have dashboard, grid, split screen, flap, slots, picture in picture. Now, the picture-in-picture picture would be like for a watch-along, like I was talking about with the wrestling match, to do that watch-along. Uh, so we can go picture-in-picture, picture, and you can see A and B. You can move that around if you like. You can make that smaller or bigger, and we can even do the color, the border color. Let's do blue once again. Keep it brand-specific, and it should... Be there no I didn't hit done so let's try that again multi view we're gonna go picture in picture border color got to make sure you hit done when you come back from there hit done and there we have it so when I pick multi view I'm gonna click on that it's gonna ask for a and B so a will be retromania and B will be the shot you see right here 
And I like that little bit of a transition right there as we come in. Now you see the multi-view. And I can make that a lot smaller. I can also make the border a different color. I can do all these different things. But it's pretty amazing to be able to do that and have that kind of power. And then when I go and I click on mine, it'll stay solo. And it just kind of just... The transitions and the, the, the way that they did everything to go from one shot to another, obviously you can have cut from one shot to another, or as I did, pick cross, dissolve, wipe, cube, and twist. But these pre-made transitions, uh, the only way they can make them better is to have you choose these transitions. They really are incredible. They're really great. So uh, right now, what I wanna do is go to the different cameras. So let's go back to the screen recording and we have built-in camera, and you can see Cam Link 4K, Display One on the iMac, FaceTime HD camera on the iMac, as well as the iPhone, which you see right here. We also have the MacBook Air, which we may actually be using the MacBook Air and uh, trading in the iMac, because this thing is almost as powerful as the iMac for basically the second uh, lowest base model, if you compare it to the Mac Mini for under a thousand bucks. This was $929. It's been incredible. So I can use the FaceTime camera on this in place of the iMac. I don't think I can run two instances of SwitcherCast. That's when I'm running on the iMac. I don't think I can do two instances on two different Macs. I don't want to mess anything up. I'm just going to keep it there. But we do have the iMac uh, right here. That's the FaceTime HD camera. I just wanted a different um, shot. You can see the iPhone over here. You can see actually the camera that we have right there. That's our next camera, which is the Sony a6400 with um, the cam link and then an adapter. And it's plugged into the CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 Plus. So let's get a shot of that. Now, the reason why I have this is because this will be hooked up under a different set up because right now we have um, just to remind you we have this the Saramonic Smart Rig Plus plugged in uh, to the Saramonic Blink 500 Pro. I have two live mics mine and then my wife has another one for the home gym tour portion of this video and the other one will be a podcast one using the Rodecaster Pro but I'm also going to use I'll come back to me right here I'm also going to use the Anchor USB-C hub plugged into the iPad Pro that will give me the USB in order to use the Rodecaster Pro as a USB audio interface. That's what we're doing now with the Smart Rig uh, Plus. Smart Rig Plus Plus. I don't know if that's the... It's the Smart Rig Plus, I believe. Uh, it's taking up a USB-C slot. I don't have the second one and you're not able to use a hub that has two USBs. I don't think the bandwidth permits it. So it's one or the other. This is a really good portable setup with the Smart Rig Plus, with the Saramonic in the case like this, iPad Pro, my iPhone, and my wife's, which we already have, without using the Macs and be able to do that over the same Wi Fi network. So, really, really powerful. I, I like this setup. But what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to. Um, the setting that I told you about, not the setting, the environment where I'm going to be in here. My wife is going to be hooked up with her iPhone 11 out there in the home gym. And then she's going to be shooting out there. And also she has the Saramonic Blink 500 uh, lav mic hooked up and we can talk. Now I can't hear her unless she she's close by, which we're going to shoot right now. So let's just talk about video on iOS devices only. We got a few more options here. But for now, I really want to concentrate on the audio and the video that are connected to the iPad Pro right now. I have the Saramonic XLR adapter as a portable Smart Rig Plus. Also, the Saramonic Blink 500 Pro. There's two transmitters connected to one receiver, which is connected to the Saramonic device through USB-C into the iPad Pro. As a matter of fact, it doesn't have to be in the same room, just on the same Wi-Fi network. And on the audio version, it has a pretty good distance. My wife can go throughout the entire uh, apartment here. As a matter of fact, she's right outside. I'm going to cut to her right now, and she's going to show 
the home gym, so take it away. Oh, you're shooting me right Hey, now. thanks. Okay. So right. let me uh, shut this so we don't see if we get any okay. sound you. interference. But we're going to walk out here and look at the home gym while we're testing this. So lots of exciting things to come. We have been talking about minimalism and how to embrace that in your life and in your home gym. So stay tuned for many exciting things out here. Are we taking it back to you? I'm, I'm shooting multi-view right now, as a matter of fact, with the new background image option. So we have the mountains in the background, you're shooting the gym, and I'm right here in the uh, podcast studio slash living room, taking a look at everything as you shoot it. So that's pretty cool. All right, How do we thanks, look? Katie, appreciate it. I mean, Christy, I need to be more professional when I do that. So now what we have set up is the Rodecaster Pro. You can see the Rode Procaster right here. And we're hooked up in a video podcast style setup. Now we have, like I said, the Rodecaster Pro is all the way over there. I don't know if we can get a shot of that. We might be able to with my iPad. Tons of cords, tons of cords. Got to get that out of the way. But there is the desk and there's the Rodecaster Pro off to the right. Now, this is not what I would call a minimalist setup. We're trying to live a life of minimalism, my wife and myself. Uh, talking about coming back here, the wires that I have, having me trouble with that. And since we're starting a new session, I got to switch back to cross dissolve. The transitions do not stay uh, where they're at. As a matter of fact, when I'm talking about this setup, this is not exactly what I would like. This is a just a mic stand right here. This is what my wife uses for the Career Junkie podcast. But this Rode Procaster is kind of heavy, so it's kind of dropping the mic stand down a little bit. I have a tabletop set up with the Rode Pod mic. I could also use the Procaster. So what I'm probably going to do is switch this out. I love the Pod mic for the price, 99 bucks. This is 229, and I have an SM7B. We're going to do all sorts of comparisons uh, in this video, two thirds, because I'm going to hook up the pod mic, which in some ways for less than half the price, I like it a lot more. And you can kind of see, let's bring it up here. I have a mic activator. It's the SE Dynamite. It plugs right into the back of the microphone. For me, it's the easiest place to put it into a chain. I'm going to do the same thing with the Rode pod mic, although the Rode pod mic is a, is a little bit brighter uh, and it might not need it. But the clean gain, 28 decibels I get on the Rodecaster Pro. I got this turned down to 12 or 13 on the levels. But that's not the point of what I was talking about. We're setting this up for a podcast style thing. And I wanted to show you uh, my Sony a6400. So let's go back. We can see we have the FaceTime camera there shooting that. We also had um, the iMac shooting. That's the FaceTime uh, camera. We turned it around. It was pointing at me. And then we have the A6400. Now, this is the part where I'm talking about that you don't just need, that's that's some inception right there. Uh, you don't just need um, iOS devices, all a little distracted by the inception. I have this hooked up through a cam link. I actually have two cam links. So theoretically, I could get an DSLR or even another device that's not iOS specific. Uh, I could probably maybe get an Android phone and then hook it up to a cam link through the Mac, and hopefully it will come up. I'm not quite sure, but as far as DSLRs go, or cameras with clean feeds, so when you see this, there's a clean feed on the A6400. Some of the other ones do not have a clean feed. That's crazy right there. Some of the other ones, let's get off of that. Some of the, some of the ones you'll be able to see all the information in the display. That's not what you want. These have a clean feed. And Elgato, who makes the cam link, has that up on their site, what cameras and or even camcorders. You can use a camcorder or a DSLR. What provides a clean feed through HDMI or micro HDMI in this case? So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the Rode Pod mic. I'm going to set up just a TV tray. Might be a little bit easier to set up. There's a ton of wires here. And this mic stand kind of just makes it a little bit more cumbersome. Now, ideally we would be at the desk, but I have this huge TV up here that I'm able to see what I'm talking about and kind of look past it or look off camera to see what's going on. So 
that adds the benefit of not having monitors. I already have a TV here in the living room, so it makes it much, much easier. But let's switch over to the pod mic. It's kind of a unintentional test between the Procaster and the pod mic. So let me know in the, in the comments which one do you like. And I'll switch over to the pod mic with a tabletop stand, and we'll come right back. So here we are with the Rode Pod mic, and uh, there's no windscreen on this. We have this without the windscreen. I didn't test out the Rode Procaster. I want to show you something. I have my headphones in, which makes it much easier to monitor what's going on. But my desk all the way over there is stretching out my uh, Sennheiser headphones right now. Uh, so obviously, like I said, we would do this at the desk over there. All the wires would be nice and tight and wrapped up. But right now we're stretching everything out. And uh, like I said before, we have the TV up there, it's off camera, but there's a 20 foot HDMI cable that I got plugged into the Anchor USB-C hub and then plugged into the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. The beautiful thing about this that I really like, I'm gonna switch to the TV stand. This is all we got right here, the little TV tray uh, that we eat off of while we watch TV. And I have my iPad Pro. So it's not off to the side, I'm able to kind of direct and switch and do all that stuff and have the Rode pod mic right here. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to put the cover on and you tell me uh, if that sounds much better. Now, obviously, aesthetically, the, the Rode pod mic looks incredible without the uh, windscreen, but the windscreen does help with some plosives and also turning the microphone to the side helps quite a bit with the plosives. So like I said, we're kind of doing an unintentional uh review of the pod mic here. So yeah, I'm going to go back to multi view because I really like the fact that I can and by the way, I did the yoga video earlier, and I know all, no audio came through. So some of the art stuff with monitoring can be a little uh, still a little bit funky with me on some pre recorded content. Uh, they have been trying to fix that, especially at the video chat. But um, hopefully an update comes where you can really mix the audio. But but it's incredible what you can do, plug in a Rodecaster Pro, be able to do a video podcast, be able to have everybody who is in person be able to see up on a monitor and do all that stuff as I hit the XLR cable. I'll probably need a new pair of those. So it's kind of like if I wanted to do multi-view of this, I would do this and then bring it right there. So it's me in both shots, but I'm showing you once again Having this little TV tray, having a mic stand, which was like something like 20 bucks or something like that at uh, Guitar Center. They have ones up on Amazon as well. And then showing it as I'm looking at it right here. And if I wanted to go solo, I can just go solo right into that. And, I, and that was the art part. I came out of the picture in picture, but when my smaller picture in picture, you saw me do a completely different transition and just drop out at the shot. That's really nice. I really like that. Um, another thing, I didn't go to the iMac display. So I have my MacBook Air here. Now, ideally, what would happen is if I wanted to bring up a website or do something that's right here, there's not much room to work with. If I wanted to bring up the screen here and talk about a website or something going on, I can type that in dynamically as the show's going on. Now, where the iMac is placed and where I am, I'm not able to do that. But I just want to show you right here real quick that you can also bring up a screen. You can share the screen from your iMac. You can share the screen from an iOS device or a multiple one. So it's pretty cool that you will go multi-view here, as a matter of fact. Let's uh, make that A and bring me up from the bottom. If you wanted to, you could literally have multiple iOS devices and a Mac on the same network and be sharing screens and camera as a mix. So if you had nine, you can share two screens and have seven cameras or other things. You can you have a choice when you use an iOS device, whether you want to share it as a camera or share it as a video source. And I'm sharing this through SwitcherCast on the Mac. So I can talk about my Mac desktop or an app or if I brought up Steve Richards Fitness.com, I could do that right there. And we'll go solo right there. Really, really nice. And uh, just everything that you can do with this, as far as that's concerned. Let's go to scoreboard and we're gonna screen record that and let me come up here. We're kind of doing some of this, some of this live. And now we are screen recording. Now, the interesting thing is when I screen record, 
the whole switcher comes up on the monitor on the HDMI. So it's kind of kind of a bug or it's meant to be. So here we are with the scoreboard. And what I can do is do display scoreboard, I can do home visitor, I can do a template. And I can pick different templates that I want. So when I turn that on, there is the scoreboard just comes right up there. That's that's really cool. And I can obviously go there and, and switch that. Let's see what our templates baseball. Let's turn that on. I actually like that a lot. I like that a lot. And you can do innings and all sorts of other stuff that'll change dynamically. Runners first, second. Oh, wow, that is cool. That is really cool. That is a nice touch right there. You can edit the properties. I hit the wrong button. Edit the properties so I can change that. I know, blue, it's very exciting. And now it's blue. Actually, I don't want to change that to blue. I'm going to edit the properties again. Scores, background, color. Um, I'll just go, you can default it right back to white. That's nice. There it comes up right there. Let's see, edit properties, count above, below, team one setup. So I can now pick uh, my blue as one. And then visitor. I, I, I wish you could, let's see if you can do that. I might be doing it wrong. So team two, let's go color on team two and make team two my wife's favorite color red. Okay, it comes back to that. So that's my fault right there. And you can also change the position. So if you wanted it to be right in the middle and right down there and have it right there, scale, I can scale it to where it's there and then change the X position to where it's there, done and right there. So let's stop the screen recording. Hopefully it'll bring you back to a full screen of this on the switcher. Let me stop doing it. And it did. Hey, so when you're screen recording and trying to do anything like this, which, you know, most people aren't, it will kick you into the full switcher thing on a monitor or TV. So just want to let you know that. And there that is. Let's see. Um, scoreboard is not in our assets, but if I shut it off, look at what happens. Nice little transitions right there. That is really cool. Really cool. Nice back and forth. I'm sure you're tired of that right now. So all different controls. We covered it in the first couple of videos. Obviously there's a Facebook comments you can display, not YouTube or Twitch. Also video chat, also a uh, Facebook poll feature. Auto switching is kind of, kind of um, very unique. So I'm going to pick, I have all my sources. I'm going to shuffle this, the interval. It asked me to pick this. Let's say I interval it every five seconds. We'll, we'll check it out and see how this works. So auto switch is something I haven't tried yet. And there we go. It's cross dissolving because that's the transition I have. And now it's going to the TV tray, the famous TV tray camera angle. Now it's up on me, not prepared for that. And now it's going to switch <laughs> to the iPad Pro, which shows uh, the tripod. And then back to me. So it's going through all the camera sources that are listed. So if my wife was out there with her iPhone, or if it was anywhere, it would auto switch to this and there it's a FaceTime HD, which it didn't do last time. Now it's doing it in order. That's very strange. Hmm. Now it's going back. So I guess is it random? Hmm. Could be random. And I can just stop this anytime I want. I'll stop it right there. Very, very interesting. I, I like that a lot. So that's about it. I know I put quite a bit of time into this. I'm going to try to timestamp each and every section of this, but very fascinating. I think Switcher Studio is a really strong contender for anybody that knows that they have access to a lot of iOS devices. And you saw what I did with the Mac with Switcher Cast with a DSLR and a Cam Link. All these different things can be applied to expand your live streaming setup in a minimalistic setup. So the iMac, not so much, but if I didn't even use the MacBook Air, or if I did, I travel with the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro, and they go right in the backpack. So, and that's gonna be an interesting set of videos where I talk about my minimalistic setups for podcasting, for recording workout videos, all these different things. But if I wanted to go live, or even if I wanted to have my wife 
use the switcher here to film a workout video or any content live and on the fly. You can stream it live or you can edit live. And then when we're done, the video goes straight up. Maybe minor edits here and there or stuff we might have missed or a little bit of B-roll. But essentially, you're doing most of the work, if not all the work. You're getting great audio through the USB-C on the iPad Pro, at least in my uh, opinion. And I've even tried to hook up a shotgun mic to the iPhone 11. And guess what? It works. As long as the iPhone 11 is uh, the switcher. Now, what I haven't tested any other setup uh, out on this, but this works great. And the Smart Rig is portable. The Saramonic Blink 500 Pro is portable. Hell, even the pod mic, if you could hook this into the Smart Rig Plus, it works. The SE Dynamite provides enough clean gain. You, you can podcast with that. That is a podcast interface. That is an audio interface that you can use with a headphone jack that you can monitor your audio with the microphone. All these different setups are fascinating. Uh, I really do believe Switcher Studio, like I said, especially in 2021, as people are doing things more virtually, this thing is so professional, this piece of software, and the updates over the past year or two have been incredible, and I look forward to more. So you can also use an affiliate link uh, that I had set up over the holidays with them uh, because I really do like the software that much. Use that to save a little bit, supports the content here. Uh, link will be in the description below. Also, links and codes for other affiliates are in the description below, and I can't say it enough. Thank you guys so much for supporting the content, supporting Stevie Richards Fitness, doing everything to keep this brand going, whether it's here on the YouTube channel, the affiliate model, or StevieRichardsFitness.com, which I should have loaded the website in the B-roll to, to plug it. StevieRichardsFitness.com, home of the resistance band training programs and workout videos. Check it out. You can always email me, stevierichardsfitness at gmail.com. By the way, I could have put that up there, email all these different things to up the production. Uh, it's always a, a, an evolving journey, a technology, and doing this kind of stuff along with fitness. And it, it, it's a great time to be alive and be able to learn this stuff and, and improve. So thank you guys so much. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great day.